how can you define a, a style as being good and being bad? Um, it depends on the criteria of the person that made it. If they've, you know, if they've really, and there's one is technique, but there's balance, there's color, there's has that person kind of achieved what they want to, to achieve, which is one of the big art questions, you know, is it, you know, is it... Would that be working yeah. on assumptions or, or can you see immediately, like, ah, oh, no, I know what they're trying to do, but they just didn't quite cut it. The Killer Keller podcast. The Killer Keller official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Here we go. Right, here we go. Right, here okay. we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller <laughs> Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, baby. You don't need to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the shares of Carers, all the originals. People have been doing it from the jump. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hodder Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Big shout out to everyone who's got the television app, free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture, the sporting art, things that create your soundtrack to make your days even better, even more creative and proactive. Um, inside the house today, wee, we've got an OG, we've got an original, we've got man from the mid 80s, maybe a little earlier, a bit beyond, you know. Hoppington was the uh, in, uh, inception. Uh, but this guy cut cloth and made impact in the early 80s and beyond. This is Snake in the Building. Hey. Welcome, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Fancy having you on. First of all, big shout out to um, Old So Cool. Yeah, yeah. The book who uh, who kind of partnered us together. Got yeah, us together. Yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big up, Taz. All day. Yeah, yeah. I've got yeah, yeah. a shirt, my brother. Yeah, good, rock on. Good guy. Good guy he is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we should start there because the, the, the archive within the book, if you haven't checked out the book, is really something else. But um, it, it has a snapshot of the 80s and the, the influx of this culture coming mm. into, into our public domain. Mm. What was mm. that like? What was that like for you, Snake? It's, um, it's, it, was, it just took over everything, to be honest. You know, I was a kid growing up with Norwich and come from this big family. Um, and, you know, there was all this other music going on that I just wasn't really massively into and then hip-hop came out and it was just like this new energy, you know. And it was hard to find. It was There wasn't a lot of it around. What, you know? scarcity? Was that, was that part of the, uh, the, the... I think, no, it was an energy thing that was positive. It was like this really vibrant, positive, new, it felt like a new kind of music, mm. felt like uh, just just something that had come from another planet in a way, you know? Mm. And I, you know, the graffiti stuff was like really minimal. I mean, there was nothing out there, you know? Mm. I remember seeing Wildstar. I can't even remember if I saw it on TV or if I went to the ICA to see it first. Of course it was the um, ICA that it was premiered, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was on Channel 4, I think, mm. um, about 82, 83. And there was some videos, you know, the message had come out and and then the uh, Rocksteady crew... So mate of mine came from Hamburg, so I was always jumping between London and Hamburg when I was younger. And um, what was that? I was just hitchhiking around Europe a lot, and I went, met, got on a train with some friends, and they were having a, these people were having a party on the train, on the tube train, and I, we just joined them, and they're, they're still mates, you know. And I was about eighteen at the time. It's like the spontaneity. Just in my mind, feels like it's going to be the general thread of the podcast. There's a lot of spontaneity, especially when you're younger. There's a lot of spontaneity, right? You know, there is because you meet people, and you know, you just go, "Hey, I'm going to hang out," you know, because older people don't hang out so much. No, and you hang out and you get bored together, and you Freedom do nothing. Of it. Yeah, Freedom. you're basically getting bored together, and you're making friendships, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So we're just hanging out, and then one of them came over, and he said, and he's still one of my best mates, and he was a music journalist, and um, you know, he knows his stuff, and he just said, "There's this exhibition on it." Olympia, I think it was, and it's a gaming or kind of technical things like, you know, hi-fi kind of show and stuff like that. And the Rocksteady crew are going to be performing there, and so we just went along. Whoa. And I remember sitting there, and I don't remember much about the song. I mean, it wasn't particularly an amazing song or mm -hmm. anything, uh, but I was watching the guy in the background painting the wall, you know? So he was just doing his graph on the wall, and that's the first time I'd ever seen it live. Do you know who it was that was painting at the time? Was it Doze or something? Was it mm. Whoever the guy was in the rock steady, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, okay. You know? Um, and um, I just thought, I can do that, you know? So I went home, and 
like I said, I was in this house with a big family, but by that point, half of them had left, and I had a room to myself for the first time in my life, and so I just went home and painted the wall. You How know, old are you at this time? If that's 82, I would have been 20, actually. You know, 20. so I'm quite old for a graffiti ice, yeah, but yeah. there weren't any other graffiti eyes. It's not like... You can't base it on anything, can you? You know, there's a lot of kids who are sort of starting in their 40s and fit, fit 14 yeah. and 15 and stuff like that, but it didn't exist before that, yeah. so I wouldn't have been out doing 14 and 15 because I didn't know about it. So your family, so your your, your, your siblings were older? Uh, most of them. One one is younger, the rest are older. Yeah. So I'm one, I'm one of seven. So Seven? We lived, yeah, we lived in a little house with nine of us in total. <sighs> but my dad died when I was really young, and then, um, you know, but we all, you know, we all just kind of... Muddle through, really, Mm-mm. as you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and my mum didn't care. You know, when I was so when I was really young, my dad painted a blackboard on the wall in the kitchen, and we were just always writing on the wall. You know, we were just literally always just drawing on this wall. Really, so it was like so, a blackboard that you know you do your daily. Yeah, it scribbles. was like a wall like this, you know. But yeah. it was just like the whole kitchen wall was blackboard, and we'd literally just be sitting there drawing. You know, one of my brothers is a cartoonist, and. You know, were, they into hip-hop? were they into the pop? Were they into the pop? No, they're all in different stuff. To be so he's a cartoonist and yeah, one's a cartoonist and other uh, board games, and um, one's now copyright. My eldest brother was a graphic designer, which is what I was doing even before the graffiti. So I was even before I left school, I used to go and help him in the studios in, where he worked in Soho, and just learning the craft of graphic design Isn't back that then. Intriguing. You know, I was about I was probably about thirteen or fourteen when I started yeah, doing yeah. that. Just going up to the studio in London and helping him. It's funny, though. It's normally the other way around. Like, people start with graph and they get into it like that, but you were the opposite way. Yeah, well, it's my family's always been kind of in that. My great granddad was a compositor on the Times. So it's always been like topography in my family and um, graphic design. That's it's, incredible. It's, it's, uh, it's always been our, it's, it's our family thing. And we all work together. We still all work together. I now work for my nephew, who's software developer. So I do a lot of software coding now, which is still the design end of it. I do, but we, you know, we just, you got to keep evolving. Yeah. It's all about evolving, learning new skills, learning new tricks. Yeah. Doesn't matter how old are you, I just, you know, I remember when I was about 18, the, the, um, we had a studio in Union Street near London Bridge and the computer came in and we'd all been, you know, doing it all by hand before that and the computer came in and I saw these older people who just couldn't adapt, Mm. just lose their work. Yeah. So they were probably in their 40s, you know, and I was about 18 or something. And we had to learn, and so you're constantly learning. You know, and I taught myself software development and HTML and CSS, sort of front-end design of it, and, you know, I'm still working, you know, so... You Evolve will be extinct, basically. Well, yeah, but it's life. <laughs> it's life in general, yeah. You know, and, you know, you would have seen your career mm. evolve since you started doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and changing, and technology changes and all that shit, you know. Well, you, can, you know, yeah. you wouldn't be doing this. No. Uh, this is just me beatboxing. Ago, you know? <laughs> this is just beatboxing, right? You know? <laughs> you know? How's that work? You'd have had a big video camera or whatever, you know? Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. Um, so I've gone off track a bit. No, no, um, carry but, on but, um, as you were. So, you know, I was always into that, always into drawing um, and typography. And, yeah, so I went home and I painted my wall. I think I just did my name on my wall in car paint. I went out and bought some car paint and did that. And then... I really can't remember how I ended up in, like, Covent Garden and all that scene, mm. you know. I was hanging out, mm. as you do. Mm-hmm. I met... I, I had a girlfriend up in Tottenham at one point, so I was living up there, and I met Frank Canman, mm-hmm. who was my partner at that point, became my graffiti partner at that point. Mad. And... You take all this a lot in, people. This is some we, huge intel. You know, we would sit around his flat, or, no, his bedroom, basically, just drawing... All day, all night, you know, just drawing. And you'd go out and paint the local wall or something like that. And yeah. then at one point, we got a phone call. Said, you know, there's these walls down in Covent Garden. You can have a bit of a space on them if you want. You know, it's now. Jumped on the bus, went down to Covent Garden. Didn't know what we were going to do. We just came up with that death piece. Yeah. Basically, just made it up on the bus on the way down there. We didn't do any sketches or anything. We so just it wasn't went so thought that you would, what becomes these iconic moments in documentation. You just this is just on the fly. This is just this oh. was on the fly. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're what you kids and you just you do anything. Yeah. Really, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's actually yeah, some beer involved. Life, yeah, I'm there. Cool. Some <laughs> things are better in life if you don't think about it too hard. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we just went down there. You know, look at it now. It's a pretty shit piece. Got to say, you know, it was like. We hadn't developed any technique. We didn't know what we were doing. We, just, you know, the paints in those days were 
well, atrocious, mm. you know, mm-hmm. car paint. I mean, somebody referred to it as piss with a bit of colour in it, you know. <laughs> it is, um, uh, you know, dripping and, you know, you, you couldn't get any solid colours. Mm. Just going over it and over it again. So um, we did that and then you just started hanging out, you know. Mm. And then, But there was also at that point, so Covent Garden at that point was, you know, a lot of this stuff was funded by the... GLC, there was a lot of sort of money going into supporting the arts and right. things like that. So there was like the Time Out Festival in Covent Garden that happened every year. I had a mate, one of my best mates was a busco, does a robotic dance. He's still doing a robotic dance. Is it what, Covent Garden? Yeah, no, still? not at Covent Garden. No, he does it professionally. To, nice. as a light, you know, um, and he's still amazing, you know. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'd learned a bit off him and me and my mate Chris went off around, travelling around Europe trying to do a bit of a robotic dance for ourselves so as basket, <laughs> trying to make a bit of money, you know. Um, and the fiddle, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got arrested in Hamburg doing that and, you know, chased somewhere in Berlin or something. But um, <laughs> um, So there was all that. But, yeah, the, you know, there is, like, at the moment, there isn't, there isn't, like, support for culture and art like there was then. Mm, there just no. isn't, you know. It really so isn't. So places for teenagers to kind of hang out and learn mm. stuff. Mm. Um. It's all been kind of, since Thatcherism, it's kind of been mm-hmm. degraded. Slow you decline. Know, you know, so um, I don't want to be negative about too much stuff, but, you know, that is, that's mm. what it was. There was a lot of funding. So you know, they had these walls. I think they were renovating the Royal Up House or something and they had these walls and they just gave us one of them. And, you know, we just did Dynamite Piece in, I think it was 84... I've got it here. I mean, yes, let's have a look. We we do have the specimen exhibited right here. So if you're not uh, so, watching and you're listening, get your peepers on um, the screen. This so is crazy! Wow. So this really is my old it. sketchbook. Oh. So that's the dynamite piece I did, eighty four. Okay. I think the first piece I did out in the street do it on this was. One here, because um, yeah, give people. Wow. And these can also be obtained on Flickr, right? Yeah, they're all on my Flickr thing. Yeah. Um, Crazy. So I think the first piece I did out on the street was down Norbington, um, which I have got a picture of. The yeah. rest of the stuff, most of us didn't have cameras. No. Yeah, feel free if you look for yeah, it. Yeah. I know it's a bit difficult with the no, mic. No, no, I'm going to um, keep it flicking. Um, you keep it talking, I'll keep and, it And, uh, yeah, you know, so did that, and there's a lot of sketching, a lot of experimenting. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of sketches in here too, by the looks. There's a lot of sketches because you know a lot of us didn't have cameras. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to Grand about this at the that exhibition we Big up Grand, into. yes. And um, you know, we we had if anything we had a one ten camera. Yeah. 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 You know, a little. If you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, and so there's a lot of work that we did that just didn't get recorded. I mean, but my old sneakers, I wish I still had them. Them sneakers are great, <laughs> man. Like, look at the webbing of the the, the bubble gum um, stuff bubble I was gum, doing yeah. at that time. You know. Way ahead, way ahead of its time, man. Um, Crazy yeah, but there was There's another classic one. There's a classic snake right there. Check that. Crazy Carnival. Yeah, yeah. Did that with Alex, Ariane. Yeah, that's right. Big up Ariane. Yeah, yeah. Big up Ariane all yeah, day, yeah. man. He said he might be coming into a chat with yeah, you soon. Yes, what I like to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not pushy on the podcast. I just, you know? <laughs> I just shake the rod every so often. If I know in advance people are coming, it makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. Billy Business said he, you've been after him as well. Yeah, man. I'm a so, pest. Uh, a pest in this you piece. You need to get him. He's a lovely yeah. guy. Really lovely guy. There we go. Um, some more here. I'm going to turn my phone off. Yeah, no worries. Um... Look, so again, I'm, I am literally pointing to the screen, the, the pictures from this mm. awesome uh, documented archive uh, of, a, uh, of a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Amazing. that in Hamburg. That was my mate's car in Hamburg. And again, but the painting in Hamburg wasn't much better than it was here. Um, oh, really? So, so yeah. it was just as bad. Yeah, yeah. You just was so, yeah. it, it was so be, behind, they, every, the industry was behind what was going on. There was no industry. It was car yeah. paint. I mean, it was a car paint industry, you know. Um, so, you know, a lot of people went out racking it up and stuff, you know, buying it and just um, you worked with what you had. You there's, know? A th- there's a theory with um, that came from the book Bomb the Suburbs, which is just above us there yeah. on the wall. Um, Upski, big up, mm-hmm. um, hero of mine. He uh, he made a suggestion on the book that, you know, maybe the, 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 the attack of... Uh, graffiti artists with car paint on trains was kind of it was applauded by the, the car industry 
because obviously public transport I'd like is, to th- is the rival, <laughs> right? I suppose so. I mean, I'd like to be saying they'd, they were making money out of it, but most of it was nicked, so yeah, they probably yeah, yeah. weren't. Yeah, true, true. Um, it's what you had, you know, because like before, you know, graffiti has existed since Roman times, yeah? But, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, what you had before was paintbrushes. And what you had around London was, you know, you had the old mural commissioned by some local council, you know, but there was no... There was no street art culture, there was no graffiti culture. Um, yeah, that's my old... Cat matches colour, come on. Yeah. I, I, the I, I lived in a flat in Ballam and I painted everything. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I lived in a flat in Ballam, paint, we painted everything. Painted. So, uh, just, uh, just segueing yeah. off a little bit. So yeah. what, what were the... Look, because I can see the... Uh, Duplicolour. Uh, colour. I've got a couple of cans of them at the back. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Duplicate and that, that classic spray paint stuff from Halfords or wherever it was at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see that there, yeah, the yeah. yellow tins. Yeah, yeah. So funny seeing well, you, them now. You did what you, you got, what you could get, yeah. you know, and for, for caps, you know, nozzles, um, you'd go and get off more hairspray cans or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, spray mountain cans. And and hairspray and, you, and things whatever like that. Whatever, because like, yeah. you know you, you could get different thicknesses. Mm. So you'd be looking for, like, one that would give you, like, a thinnest mm. line or the fattest line. Mm. You know, now... To be honest, I don't, you know, I'm not writing anymore that much. I'm doing bits on the skates and all that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Actually, yeah, please pull them up because... Um, uh, so, I, you know, my thing at the moment is skating. So I, and I've always skated. Lovely. So, so you again, if you're, not, not, if you're not watching and you're listening, yeah, we've got some business here. Some uh, roll, roller boots that have been... Yeah, Morosi's RH4s. So it's sick. Fucking lovely. That's some classic, <laughs> classic 80s London business there. Love it. Well, I only did that about a month ago. Yeah, but it's still... <laughs> but you've got the, you've got the, the main style. ingredients. Yeah. That's my style, you know. It's like I'm looking around at the moment thinking, you know, do I want to do this still? Do I want to play with it or, you know... And every time I try it, my style still feels kind of mm. old style, mm. yeah? Mm. Um, so it's um, it's a case of kind of do I stop for a while, or do I push through and see if I can play around with doing something a bit different and you know again mm. evolving it. You know, you get a bit bored of doing the same thing all the time, mm. and you got to evolve. You do, and so. But that's a mindset, isn't it? It's hard to reset that. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I saw your podcast with Mister Sens, and he was talking mm. about because I know him really well. He's, yeah. he's well, mate. Yeah, Nicole, big up, Sens. Um, and, um, you know, he was saying that, you you know, you've got to just keep working on it. You've got to experiment and you've got to push. And, mm. and you know, he does his stuff without kind of any pre-drawing. It's all made up, kind of. He has it in his head. Mm. I mean, I love his work. You know, it's, it's, so it's a good. homage to black women. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there are all these faces all around yeah. London and worldwide now. Furthermore, um, he never told us. He never told us how he does some of those techniques. Well, I remember incredible. For, when I first met him, which is, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, we were sitting in the pub and got talking and we found out we were both old graffiti artists, you know. And his work then was, you know, it was good, but it wasn't mm-hmm. anything really special. Mm-hmm. And his technique wasn't anything special. And he disappeared for a while. Mm-hmm. And he came back and he's got this most beautiful style. Uh, and he's gone off and worked at it. Mm-hmm. And he's worked at it. Mm-hmm. And he's developed something that is now unique to him and exploratory and, you know, it's playful. Mm-hmm. And you've got to do that, you know, you've got to work at it. Does, is that where you're concluding, what you're thinking about uh, pausing for a couple of months or a year to just to you know, let the I, well, I well fill? Stopped, you know, I was doing the graffiti all the way through the 80s. So, you know, I, was, I started, I think, writing in about 82, 83. Mm. And I was doing it all through the 80s and I was doing it in London and Hamburg. So when it really started to kick off in London, like yeah. in 86, yeah, you'd like already that, filled your quota of. I was over in Hamburg. So I was oh, living right. in Hamburg and Berlin, and uh, so I was painting out there. There was not much scene over there. I actually just came back from Hamburg, and there was a graffiti exhibition out there talking about like the early yeah. Hamburg graffiti. And, and according to that exhibition, it started in '87. Well, I was out there in '84 onwards doing pieces, so it did exist before, mm. but it just there was no scene. Um, and come '90s, I'd kind of I'd done what I could do in it. You know, it just I wasn't. Feeling it, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't getting anything from it. You weren't contributing. I wasn't contributing. There was mm. also no scene. Mm. You know, I think maybe in London it was, but the it, the scene kind of felt a bit dead to me, and it didn't come back to life until about ten years ago when it started to really, you know, it, and now you know mm. now it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's literally everywhere. Yeah. 
And when I was started, there was none of it. And then well, was, okay, you know, it's interesting. You, you'd be a good person to ask because start from somebody that was the only person in a particular scene doing graph, being in Germany, to being this side of the uh, you know of, mm. of the timeline where it's in absolute abundance. I, I'm guessing like to be on your own and being called original is pretty lonely, <laughs> but to be part of the scene and it be in abundance does that. Is that as equally lonely? Is that yeah, is... It, yeah? I, I kind of get what you're getting at. I I never felt lonely before because oh, I never been I've never been much for scenes. You know, I kind of I was just doing my own thing, and I and I still am. But now it is everywhere, and I'm looking around. And I'm seeing a lot of work. I'm seeing a lot of shit work as well. You know, there's a lot of mediocrity. You know, the old eighty percent, twenty percent rule is you know you you eighty percent of it's going to be rubbish. Twenty percent is going to be great. Mm. But you're not going to get the twenty percent without the eighty percent. You're not going to get beautiful pieces oh. without the tagging everywhere. They, you that, don't get one that. without the other. That's yeah. deep. I love so when that. people piss off about the tagging, yeah. You know, well, that's that's part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, the mediocrity. Never be, yeah, yeah. Well, they're not, you know, there's not some amazing it. tags. Yeah. Good, to be honest, you know, and 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 some great work. And there's like ten foot who's just doing the whole thing of like getting to the most awkward place possible, you know, and yeah. that, that's a, that's an achievement in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, his tag isn't anything to talk about, mm. yeah. But um, but that's not the point because that's, that's not, not what it is. Not what, what was the intention. Yeah. So you know, it depends how much you want to be academic about it, how much you want to analyze it and stuff. You know, mm. um, but now you know, there's street art everywhere, mm. and street art there was no street art before graffiti, so it's all mm. blended into that. And there's some amazing street art, and there's some mediocre street art. But you know, yeah. down my way, down Penge way, I mean, there's some less in Crystal Palace, but more in Penge. There's, there's some really beautiful and experimental street art going on. There's mm. a little subculture going on down there, mm. you know. Um, and I just... So I, the thing about being lonely, I, I, I don't know. I know I'm, I'm not part of that scene anymore. I don't, I'm not an active part of that scene, but I'm mm. still really interested in it. You know, there was a, an um, onion, not onion, onion or something, um, piece down my way, mm -hmm. which I posted up on Facebook last week which is absolutely stunning. It was at the bottom of my road. It was just really beautiful, you know. Um, nice. Uh, te uh, texturally and the colours and the technique and the style, and it was just like, wow, that's a really, really nice piece. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you do see them, you know. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not envious of them. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that these people are doing this nice work. Yeah. But you don't get one without the other. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, it's it, totally... Yeah, that the cream has to rise to the top. Do you would you say? Because you were one of the contributors from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, this could be. I'm trying to find the best way to express this. There would be no to you that there was a a level of historical responsibility for its time. The things that you were doing with graph, and coming forging ideas and doing the pieces that then became documented in, you know. Very classic. They've only started being documented recently, though. But they still existed for people to see, and for it for the the to their for their to then be a response of. Do you get what I'm saying? So like they would they would see what you did. Oh, we're gonna do that, or we're gonna replicate something along the line, and it this becomes one massive. Well, it does feed in, of course. Yeah. yeah. So you know, you know, we. I mean, looking back at my death piece, it's rubbish, right? You know, by modern standards, mm. and even the dynamite piece, I think, is actually pretty groundbreaking for its time. Yeah, I don't think the crazy carnival piece is particularly that groundbreaking as a style. You know, but did you bear but, a responsibility to that? No, we were just, we were just, we were just doing it. Mm. You know, my brother Chris, who's passed last year, basically said he. he I said to him that at that point, I said to him, we were changing the world. So I must have had some kind of ego going on. Yeah, uh, I don't remember him. I don't remember me saying that to him, but. Um, you know, in a way, we did. But, yeah. you know, it wasn't just me. It was, there was, you know, it was, it was just filtering out. You know, it yeah. filtered out of New York and Philadelphia and it filtered over to London and Amsterdam and it filtered into further and further afield, you know, and we were just part of that. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, we were, were first in, in London doing it, but there was people in Bristol and Birmingham mm. doing it about but the But you also time. like one of the early adoptees in, in Germany, like you were saying, you know. Well, that's only sort of, because I was ended up, moving out there a lot and going back with the forwards and having girlfriends there and mates and stuff. Like, I, and I was then still a graffiti artist. It was like I took it over there for mm. me, 
you know, I did a shop front, I did some stuff for the, the No Budget Film Festival, I did canvases for mates and their walls and stuff, you know, and I did pieces, but it was because I was still massively into graffiti, it's an addiction, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and, and then some point in the 90s or something, I kind of stopped thinking about it, it wasn't, I wasn't doing it, you know, and skating's a bit the same, you know, when I was 16, I was picking up my skates and I was a street hockey player and I was sort of skating all over London. I'd put them on in the morning and take them off at night, you know. So good. And then, and then I've always skated and then for some time in the 90s, the, the skating culture died out. There was not much skating going on and so you end up, that felt lonely, you know, I'm going mm. on my own doing it. Since Last of the lockdown, Mohicans, yeah. since lockdown, just before lockdown, the skating culture now is massive. Yeah. Everybody's come out, right? So mm. we're all going to Barcelona. There's like 600 people coming from all over the world to Barcelona in September for a big skating event. I'm going to Berlin to skate on the Tempelhof Airport um, on the runways and all that stuff out there in August. There's there's a huge community of skaters all over London, and I'm really enjoying that, and it's a big family, and it's really supportive. Mm. And it's multi-generational, it's multicultural, it's multi -gener Nobody cares mm. who you are, who you think you are, where you're from. Mm. Your skater. It's the same with graph, isn't it? It is. Graph. Graph's a bit more, there's a bit more ego stuff going on. There's a bit more confrontation. There's a bit more tagging mm. over people's stuff. Yeah. Um, you don't get that with the, with the skating scene. We're actually pretty helpful to each other, mm. advice and stuff like that. There is a bit of one upmanship still going on with graffiti. There always will be, but that's what drives some stuff, isn't it, really? Yeah, totally. How much of the information of graph of its time was, you know, back in the 80s was, was, the tradition passed on like you mentioned the caps you mentioned the cats was there a, was there a level of advising like if if or was it all closely guarded and secretive there was probably a bit of closely guarded secretive but there was also there wasn't much information out there mm. so you're hanging out i mean i was talking to billy about this a couple of weeks ago billy business um because that's really weird you know we, we, met, business. we met we we met skating a couple of years ago and then we bumped into each other at the Beyond the Streets exhibition launch party, and he was DJing. Mm. And we worked out that we know each other from back from the early days. We all know the same people, but we just hadn't made that connection. So we couldn't remember each other from the graffiti I days. I love that. You know, but we know each other, yeah, That's from those. So the and best. so we were talking about that, and it's like you, there was no, you know, nobody had cameras, nobody had mobile phones, nobody had any way of contacting each other. So you'd go up to Covent Garden and you'd hang out. And we'd literally walk between Covent Garden, Leicester Square and Charing Cross, just seeing what was going on. You know, like, let's, well, let's go down there, there's nothing happening here, let's go down there. You go spats and that, did you go? Yeah, went spats and all that, yeah. yeah. What was spats like inside? Oh, here's some questions. God, that's, what was it like inside? I really can't remember that much. I remember a bit, I remember Tim Westwood playing there a little bit. I yeah. remember, you'd go again, you'd go and hang out. I mean, sometimes it'd be like a Saturday afternoon and you'd hang out, you know. We, we, we'd be up there, but we'd be up there all day and night but it's also the Charing Cross um, station as well with yeah, yeah. inside it as well that was yeah, also yeah. a hot spot in the, in the underground kind of walkway yeah yeah, yeah. so they, they, we literally just bounce between the three or four um, sometimes you bump into people and do stuff so then you then you communicate mm. you know what nozzles people have got what um, where can you get paint you know somebody might sketch we'd all be sketching each other's sketchbooks mm. and swapping ideas and you would get inspired mm. by each other's work you know so mm. when the Chrome Angels and Abando and all those started their style. You saw that it started to influence a lot mm. of other people's style. Mm. And that became a kind of London European-based style, yeah. which was different from the New York style that had been going on. So different cities have different styles. Mm. You know, about this time I was going to Paris quite a lot and there was a huge amount of stencil work going on. So there's Black Le Rat and a few other... Well, quite a lot of other people doing these beautiful sort of five colour pieces of stencil work, wow. which I really liked. You know, and that was before the street art. Decades yeah, yeah, you'd before. get they'd get a little piece on the wall like that, yeah, and then or you get a massive piece. And um, I, I don't. By that point, I had a bit of a camera, and I, you know, I've got loads of old photographs of that Stop stuff, it. and that kind of inspired me. So, you know, when I was in Hamburg, I was doing some stencil work, and I really liked it. And mm. you know, the skates are done with stencils because I'm not. It's kind of hard to paint to such yeah, a small yeah, space, yeah, yeah. which it. is a moulded shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with spray cans. <laughs> so I'm doing stencil work. And you play around with it. And um, um, so, you know, and you go to Barcelona and it's got a completely different art culture and sensibility. Mm. So you can see a different visual look out there than you're getting in London. Yeah. Hamburg recently just felt like all tags. Really? There was like no nice, nothing great being done graffiti-wise lately. Maybe it was there and I didn't see it, but there's a lot, a lot more tagging going on there mm. than there is in London. 
It's funny, like you, as, as, as a graffiti writer, you you observe, graph and you soak it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it becomes yeah. part of the um, the the social commentary of a city, doesn't it? Yeah, and yeah, I'm the same with typography. I I can't look at badly space typography without seeing it. Really? You know, it's really? like, you know... I can't unsee this. Can't you know, it's it. like... Oh. <laughs> um, you know, um, I, you, it becomes part of your psyche. It becomes part of your... your you know, you, you just see it all the time. You know, I see graffiti everywhere. A lot of it I don't even notice, to be honest. Mm. But then you see a great piece. You either tend to notice a really bad piece or a really good piece. Yeah, because a, a, a font is quite descriptive on the... You know, you, you jump on a laptop and you'll find a whole option of different fonts and a different way in which they're... But they're still the same, aren't they? With graphics, constantly a different style. How can you define a, a style as being good and being bad? Um, it depends on the criteria of the person who made it. If they've, you know, if they've really... And there's one is technique, but there's balance, there's colour, there's... Has that person kind of achieved what they want to, to achieve, which is one of the big art questions, you know, is it, mm. you know, is it... Would that be working yeah. on assumptions or or can you see immediately, like, ah, oh, no, I know what they're trying to do, but they just didn't quite cut it, didn't yeah. quite get it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. I see that in some of my own work sometimes, you know, you yeah. work at it and you work at it and you haven't quite got it, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. Um, Especially after, like, a couple of months away from it and you come back and you're like... Fuck, I don't even know what I was trying to do there. What the fuck happened, man? Yeah, I'm looking at my sketchbook, which I've still got here, and I'm like, um, I'm working up some stuff, and I'm, you know, when I'm going skating, I'm off, I've am i always got my sketchbook, and, I, you know, if I'm having a rest, I'll sit there and I'll sketch a bit of graph, and it's, yeah. you know, I'd love to be able to do more character work, but I was never that good at it, you know, like mode was, you know, mode was mm. fantastic and still is. Yeah, you know? it's um, moved ahead. Um, um, it just wasn't my style. So I'd do letter forms and shapes. Um, I remember... Even back in the eighties, thinking I'd be really nice to do a, a graffiti-based typeface, mm. and I never, you know, I did start drawing it, but I never. It's a lot of work building a typeface, mm. and I never got around to finishing it. But now it's, you know, everywhere. And that, you know, the stuff you got in your t-shirt yeah, could, t -shirt. could, you know, that is probably hand-drawn, but you can buy a font that will do something similar. You yeah. Know, now it's scary, so it's isn't it? Kind of there. It's kind of scary, isn't it? Well, it it. It takes away the handmade kind of vibe of it, it mm. you know, of course, but it's just, again, it's part of the evolution of it, I suppose. It's, it it's part... It's there. You, can, you know, you can't undo something when it's done. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's the... Yeah, it's the culture that's... Um, yeah, just... Yeah, it's expanding, really. But um, Expansive. Well. Let's go back to Covent Garden. Uh, you mentioned mm. Mode 2. I also want to add maybe No Limits, State of Art. and Scribbler uh, was up Scribbler, there. Scribbler, yeah. Um, uh, Artful Dodger. Oh, oh, who's still doing it, Yeah, he? still busy. Yeah, I saw you. Still probably, busy. Yeah, he's a... Yeah. yeah. Who else am I missing? Pride. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Pride, Pride stuff is beautiful. Yeah, he's amazing, man. And he's such a lovely guy as well. I've never met him. Yeah. i never met oh, really? him. So you weren't at the uh, Beyond the Streets? I was, yeah. But Were I didn't you at the Lord's Party? Yeah, I was at lunch party. Yeah, I was there, yeah. yeah. It was a fun day. Oh, um, it was such a good day. I mean, it basically was like the biggest party of who's who and people you've not seen in well, ages. I, I basically, I went to... I, so, it's one of those things, because, like, during lockdown, both two people contacted me. One was Paul, mm -hmm. and one was um, Caleb Neelam um, from Boston. Mm -hmm. who's, they're both writing these books on the history of, you know, Brit what Paul was doing the history of British graffiti and Caleb's doing that. I don't think you see Yeah, let's have a look, yeah. Um, if you have to, if you must. Really good, it's a really good book, actually. Um, the History of London Graffiti. Oh, dude, I saw this, yet. Yeah. And um, yeah. so they both... There you go, you're looking at it, if you're looking at it on the screen, it's here. They Fantastic. both came out of the blue and just started asking me about stuff. Um, what, in Boston? Yeah, you rang me up. You know, he rang me up. Well, he, is, he he Brit, is he British? He's, he's American. He's, 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 he's an American artist and author of books on graffiti and other art okay, forms. So he's doing one of an international stuff. level. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. And um, I think this was like a lockdown project for him. It's, a, it's actually a really good book because it really does describe London. Mm. And a lot of scenes in London I just had no idea about because, you know, I wasn't hanging out in those areas. So yeah. like North West London, you know, oh, they got the was never my it. scene, you know. The pit was and, um, something else, man. I probably went to the pit once in my life, you know. It's me like, too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like... Um, I'm not going to lie. Okay. You know, um... It was, you know, there's scenes in scenes, yeah, yeah. and uh, some of that stuff you never heard of. So I thought that was a really interesting book. But, you know, they were interviewing me. So it came out of that, and then the Beyond the Streets 
thing I heard about, I had a press pass for it. I didn't have the pass invite for the party. Mm -hmm. So I got there at 10 in the morning, went to the press view, found out the party was going on. Alex was coming, Billy was coming, and mm. I just thought, well, I haven't got an invite for the for the party. I'm just going to stay around the gallery all day and hope mm. they don't kick me out. And that's what I did. I walked around all day, 12 hours, yeah, yeah, just yeah, waiting, did. trying not so to get kicked out. you were there at 11? In the morning. Yes, so was I. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, we, so we probably... <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to leave because no one would be able to get back in again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was getting hungry and hungrier and I just walked around and hopefully, and I got talking to the, the girls who, you know, uh, look after the place, whatever they're called. And um, I just made sure I didn't get kicked out yeah, yeah, the yeah. party started. And then the party started and, and then Alex turned up and Billy turned up and all these other people mm. and people I'd never met, mm. you know, who knew me or I knew, knew of. Grand was out there, I, you know. I really Don was there. I mean, it was, it was good. Yeah. It was a really good, really good party. I'm really, I was buzzing off that for weeks actually. I'm just looking at the the book here, the the, the London Graffiti book, and yeah. um, for when you started graffiti writing, and what was to come after? You mentioned, you know, the mid eight, well, eighty six to eighty onwards. You were, you, you would say it would, it was peaking then, and you had already. Well, it was peaking in London by that point, but yeah. I'd, I'd moved You'd already to moved. Hamburg. So, so what, was your take on, what was your take on the Earth's Edge and, you know, pieces like that of its, of, of, the, of that later um, era of They were, they were really good. They were yeah. really good, but I wasn't part of that scene anymore. So you really felt so, detached from that? I wasn't even thinking about it. I was doing something else, you know. Yeah. I was living and working in Hamburg. I find it know, interesting and, um, that, that as, as a timeline, I mean, it's, it's, it's bigger for me. Like, I, I have mm -hmm. one of the original... Guys that were, you know, preceded that before mm -hmm. then, wasn't mm -hmm. it? You know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's incredible. So, I mean, when you started the beatboxing, when was that? When, when were the band? Uh, that was, mm, uh, I mean, 94, 95. 95 was, it yeah. wasn't even a popularized thing. It was no, no, <laughs> no, there was an odd bit. I think there's a bit in Wildstyle, isn't there? Somebody yeah, yeah. doing it and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, you know. Yeah, no, that was it way did before exist, me. But it was like, it yeah, wasn't yeah. that popular, was it? No, I guess it's what drives you along, doesn't it? And it, it, it's, and sometimes by, being the first in something doesn't automatically qualify you, <laughs> you know, of wanting to do it, do it all the time, isn't it? No, you, you move on. You, you know, you, you, you either grow into it or keep going or you grow out of it. And, you, you know, there's no right or wrong way. Mm. You just follow it. You mm. follow what interests you, then. Mm. You know, and for a while, if something that doesn't interest you, then you don't do it for a while. Mm. And if it does, and or if you can rekindle that passion, um, you know, it, it's a personal journey for mm. everyone, you mm. know. Um, and there's no real right or wrong about being like first or last or, you know, there's some great people that are just starting who are just fantastic. And you see people putting stuff on Facebook asking for advice, you know, and you look at it and you go, yeah, mm. you, need, you know, you need to hone your technique. You need mm. to put the hours in, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, but actually, you you've got a, you know you've got something you've got to start, and then there might be somebody else you go you know you're not really good at it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you said, you're just or you've just carbon just copied you. you've you carbon know. copied someone something to death, and you you've got to find well, yourself. Well, we all copy at the beginning in a way. You know, even us London ones, we were you know we were inspired by the New York stuff, and you know we copied that at the beginning, and then we developed our own style. You, everybody you know mm -hmm. does. I don't care what they say there. You know, everyone's inspired by someone else. Nothing mm -hmm. comes out of the blue completely. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I remember looking at the Keith Herring stuff in coming out of New York and I was like, it's beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not my style, but it was fantastic, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, um, I wonder where I, he got his style from. I think he just doodled, you know. I yeah. think he just practised and doodled. I mean, he used to literally yeah. walk around New York uh, uh, subway stations and just with chalk on the empty poster sites, you know, which were black paper background yeah. before they put the post up and he just do, doodle on them as far as I know. It's, just, it's not it's not normal behaviour, but then what happens is... <laughs> <you> can, <laughs> Maybe he's not a normal man. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah, totally. But then you get successful with doing something like that and then that's where, they, I guess, the confusion lies in one's head. You, do, you doodle. I mean, I still doodle. You, you know, doodle's a really subconscious form of drawing, isn't it? You yeah. Know? Yeah, you do it on the phone a lot and then you get shapes that are coming out of your subconscious and you play with that. And, you know, and if you don't want to go off and work on it, it's working, you know. It's probably the same with your stuff. We're making sounds and stuff mm. like you play. Mm. Mm. You know, it's all about playing. Playing. But if you take the, the doodling aspect of it, and I guess it's the same if you're do doing vocal riffs or whatever it is, if you catch yourself doing it and hone in on that thing, 
That's mm-hmm. like the most purest of your... Yeah, in a way. You know, like, like a tag is like a hand signature, isn't it? You know, so it's mm. very personal. You know, your shape mm. Mm. is part of your hand, right? And so is doodling. It's part mm. of your psyche. Mm. Uh, and if you work that up, sometimes actually, you know, being aware that you're doing it stops you doing it. You know, it's like it becomes like a block. It's yeah. like It's like... You know, somebody suddenly seeing you and stops, you know, somebody looking at you stops you, you become a bit self-conscious, mm. yeah. So it's, you know, how do you kind of go past that and just keep following that through? And then how do you hone it into something you really want to push out there? Because, you know, if you want to show this to people, you've got to be happy with it. Yeah. And you know? you've also got to keep on developing. Like you are saying, you know, like sends again, big up. Like he, from that to this... That takes a lot of repetition and discipline, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of work, you know. And he, you know, I didn't see him for a while and he came back and his stuff had completely changed. Yeah. Yeah, I like his early work, but it was nothing like his current work. I've got a really early sketch of his from way before when he was doing stuff. When I went around his studio years ago and bought one of his little pieces. I wish I could. You know, mm. get one of his new pieces, mm. but they're not, they're not cheap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, because the man's making a living out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, and it's a different style. But there is there is essence in there mm. of what he's doing now. There's his colour blends. There's a bit of tweaking, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff. And I guess that's sort of stuff that people maybe teach you. Ask. I never went to art school. I never went. I never, never studied any of this stuff. You so I presume it. that maybe that's what they teach you. A good teacher will teach you in in art school. I don't know. But there also has to be a level of curiosity. That's one thing at Graffiti. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Me, but you, you know. have to have curiosity in anything yeah. you're interested in. Like you can't just be given the book and say, hey, yeah, do this. It's, it's, um, because I get you, like graffiti by design, it's not supposed to be sticking to any rules, but then there are rules. <laughs> well, there are. They're, they're, somebody put something out there, on, you know, the other day was like, you know, it's not graffiti if it's not on a train. I think you follow, follow that argument, you're getting nowhere because mm, mm, mm. really then it would never have evolved. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then yeah. we, you know, you might as well go back and say, well, it's not graffiti if it's not on a cave wall, don't yeah, yeah, you know? Because yeah. that's where it kind of starts. Yeah, yeah, hardcore, yeah. Um, so you got, yeah, you got, you got to be played, you got to follow. It's funny that, isn't it? I think being an all-rounder graffiti writer is, is, is the perfect anecdote for any kind of, you know, critique, public critique. But you know, it's not so. It's not so. Um, I don't know. You have got to take with something like Beyond the Streets. We all loved it. There'd be some purists that don't. But I would also argue that, you know, let the growth happen because uh, it's inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, I'm not... Yeah, it is, it is inevitable. And I'm not a huge fan of the commodification of it. You know, like there's graffiti shops everywhere. You know, it's in the art galleries where, mm. you know, the art and the art mm. business is all about making money and, it. you know... I, not I'm to not mention big, the podcast. Jesus I'm not really. a, well, I'm not a big fan of art galleries because I always feel it's like it deadens the work somehow but mm. it is part of the culture you yeah. know and you know if these guys can get their work out there and make a living out of it and good on them you know mm. um, you know it's the same as though you know I'm not good at cartoon work I'd love to be but I'm not so yeah. and I see pieces like you know that up there and stuff and I go oh, that's amazing but, oh, you know I couldn't do that but you know mm. I'm glad it exists mm. yeah that's their style because it yeah it's the evolution of isn't it yeah yeah, it's all art. It's all art. It's all art, man. And comment below. Tell us what you think. You know, um, it's uh, it's an open conversation. Yeah. Uh, did you ever do trains? No. Nah. Did you? Uh, no buses. No I didn't buses? do a lot. No, I didn't. I don't know if I was a coward or just I was a bit old and everybody. Or I was just a bit shy. But I was never much into doing that stuff. Really, mm. I I couldn't walk past the white wall without going. Oh, I still get that occasionally, but I no, I was never, I was never into like the scene of like it's got to be illegal, it's got to be mm. that. It just wasn't me. I was, just, mm. I just wanted to make the paintings, really, mm. Mm. any way I could. Was really there any moments in um, in Covent Garden or you know the, the the moving and shaking that you'd have done for your age at that time that you know any stories that actually made you think to yourself. Or change your perception of graph and what was possible, or, or a, a story of a bad altercation, or something happened that you're like, wow, I was gonna, I was either gonna do that or that, I'm gonna register that now because I'm, that'll help me, or I've learnt from something. Do you know what I mean? Anything that Not quite. Um, 
Well, you mean like any experiences I had yeah. that, that changed the sort of direction I was yeah, looking at yeah, stuff? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think there was there was a period when people were writing over each other's work and I didn't quite get the point of that, but I'm not that kind of person, you know. Mm. Um, there was... There was a bit of gang rivalry going on, probably probably always has been, you know. So, mm. you know, and like you talked about the pit, you know, mm. and the stuff where you know, I'm not a very competitive person, so it doesn't mm. really interest me that shit. No. Um Um But I I also appreciate it does push people's skill on mm. it. You know, you that competitive thing does push each other. Mm. Um The pit was definitely a, a, a talked about place so far as uh, the the risk taking of it was a lot of risk taking yeah there was a uh, but it was like a testing ground it was you know it was a showing ground it was showing off as well wasn't it it was like mm. one upmanship bettering you know bettering you had to better yourself to be better than them and it was th mm. that so that competitive style I get but I'm not it's not me so I just wanted to paint you know mm. and I, by that point I was probably hanging out with Alex Ariane and. Mm. Uh, we were doing stuff, you know, yeah. um, sitting around sketching and... Um, what was it like working with Arian? What was it like, you know... Do, you great, know? I don't remember where I met him. We had to go through a couple <laughs> of weeks, but I don't we, we would have met in Covent Garden. He will remember, because he's got, like, a photographic memory. I mean, you, you, I show him a piece of work, all right, and he would... I go, oh, I can't remember who did that or when. And, and he would remember... Like, like, such and such, you know, April the 16th, <laughs> 97, 1987 or something. He's got this, like, this memory. It's, it's, un, it's uncanny. That's crazy. Um... <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, we just kind of, yeah, you bounce off each other, you yeah. know. You're experimenting. So, he's, you know, he's experimenting, I'm experimenting, and, you, and you're looking at each other. So that's where it works with me. It's like, um, you know, I do a letter shape and I go, oh, that's, you know, that's interesting. That's nice. Got a nice dynamic to it. I'm going to mm. incorporate that. And we um, you work together. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, that for me was more important, you know. There what there always was some sort of aggro going on between certain people. There was fights and stuff like that. But I don't remember much about them now. I mean, it's forty years ago. For crying out loud! I mean, you know, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna remember yeah. whether this person had a go at that person or whatever. There was a, there was well, obviously you know we mm. we teenage boys. Mm. There wasn't many girls in it in that scene, mm. which mm. is a shame. There, there wasn't many girls in the skating scene in those days either. But no. now, and I, I, you know, it's better for that. But it was also this, especially in places like Covent Garden, where there was also the authorities that were really against these kind of fun things happening. Kind of fun. Well, they still are. Um, there was Covent Garden was a free space, but they gave us space to paint. Yeah, they didn't give us any equipment, but they gave us the walls to paint, so it was allowed. Mm. Um, outside of that, you know, I did a piece. I think what, another one of my early, really early pieces on the side of the National Opera house down near uh, Trafalgar Square mm -hmm. in this little tunnel thing they had and I, um, you know so there was places you didn't do it but yes the authorities have always been against it they don't get it because they in a sense they're losing control aren't they mm -hmm. you know if everything's well then you know cause thinking about Hamburg a couple of weeks ago it doesn't look that nice when it's that heavily tagged really say. It just it, you know too much it, it, it was too much for me but um but was that is that that, that, that lack of control? What people people? That... But you need to have it. And the thing is, one of my friends, a friend of his daughter, who's like thirteen, got caught in Hamburg doing a piece on a wall, and she, her parents got fined ten grand for that. Jeez. Yeah. So they, you know, these are people that really don't want you to do it. But you know, I I've got a, the problem I've got at the moment is these authorities are all really anti graffiti, and this is Banksy. You know, and then they they love to have one. I mean, yeah. I've got a lot of time for Banksy. I'm yeah, not yeah. criticising him at all. But these people that are two-faced to say that they... Yeah. We're That's okay. We're That's into, not... We're into graffiti, but, you know, we'd love to have a Banksy, basically. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. cover it in Perspex and, you know, yeah. chip it off the wall and sell it if we can. You know, it's yeah. like that, that, that double standard I don't like. Yeah. Yeah. So contradictory. You know, but there's all these legal walls now. Mm. There never used to be legal walls. You know, yeah. down Crystal Palace Park, there's legal walls. Down... Bottom of the road is a legal wall. You know, I could go down there tomorrow with a, with a paint. You, you don't know, have the inclination. You don't want. You, you must. I mean, you mentioned earlier that you walk past the wall and you're like, oh, I might have a bit of that. But you I don't, don't have the inclination at the moment because I've got no idea what I want to do that's going to be different from what I was doing before. But, well, but is that a personal thing? Yeah, it's a personal thing, yeah. yeah. And, it's just, and that's just at the moment, I'm hoping. Because mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. you never know. But, you know, I've talked to Mr. Sens about it. I've talked to Tac 22, Simon, who's. Um, 
also Crystal Palace, you know, the possibility of doing some stuff. There's a place where we all skate that I'd like to do. Um, but I haven't right at the moment got a feeling of what I want to do. Mm. But maybe it's just a case of going out there and playing and seeing if something comes. Because you can sit there all day on the sofa going, I don't know what to do. And then you yeah. don't do anything, do you? So, it's, so, you know, um, me and Julian and Simon, we, we have kind of independently of each other talked about maybe going... <coughs> Going out and exploring. Crystal Palace. But then, at the moment, all my free time is skating. That's all I do, I love, which I'm loving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not knocking. Yeah. But sometimes when you do a sketch on a, on a, a pad and, or, you know, on your iPad yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, you, you, no, it I doesn't... I like analogue, mate. Yeah, well, you've got pads like, I've days. got iPads, but I like analogue. Yeah. I like pencil. Here we go. We've got more, more stuff. Well, this is my sketchbook from Mo did that. I did, I, tying Mo down to do a piece of, no, hold on. Piece Mo, of drawing, is it Mo, by the way. It's like, wow. it's like um, <laughs> finding hen's teeth. I mean, the man, lovely guy, but he will... Crazy. He, um, trying to hold him down to just sign your book. <laughs> is, um, is, just sign the book, mate. Yeah, know. shut up. Um, <laughs> no, lovely guy. But, you know, I just, um, I'm just experimenting with... with Shapes and typography, and yeah, actually, I did think of sort of doing something for you the other day, but it's, it's in here somewhere, but I don't know if I'll find it. Um, so, so good. you know, wow. so I like to, I, wow. I like the freedom that pencil gives me, yeah, yeah, just, let me get this so out. that's just, uh, check this out, gang. just experimenting with just shapes and colors. Um, but the other yeah. thing that actually holds me back at the moment, yeah, is. I'm not that familiar with the current paints. You know how well uh, they are to work with. Right, yeah, that's yeah, the piece yeah. I was thinking about. Oh for yeah, you. nice. So, I was going to overlay. Oh, I was going to overlay two Ks. Yeah. See Sick. if I can blend the colours. <laughs> I might get around to doing it one day. Yeah. In which case, I'll post it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or knock on your well, door. I'll find and out that I'm on the road. You know. Yeah. On a wall. Um, um, great. Yeah. Um, so the, the new the new paints are. Um, they're amazing, but they have a different way of. Working in the sort of pressure, you know, the, mm. the pressure you get from them. And it's just familiarising myself. Yeah, yeah. familiarising yourself. That's all it is. Oh, Facebook, mate, here's a classic. Yeah. It's one of my bubblegum pieces. Bubble gum so pieces. I was doing the bubblegum stuff. 84, I did a piece in Denmark. on bubble, No photograph of it, but the drawings are, the drawings there. Well, no, the, one of the experimental drawings is in there. So I was doing this bubblegum stuff back then. And I wow. liked it. I don't know where it is. So um, this was the one that ended up on the wall in eight eighty four. No, this was, I did something a smaller similar. piece of it. Like I just did like gum or something like oh that. Oh my that was in, god! So I was experimenting with that. that was whatever the date at the bottom of that is, wow. might be eighty six. I can't remember. Um, that, that that should be on a train, my friend. That looks <laughs> so. Wow. Um. Crazy. Uh, yeah. So I've still managed to keep that book. I've got all my old sketchbooks. Yeah, you, you have, haven't you? I, yeah, I like really the, do. You know, and some photographs and stuff like that. Um, Gifts that keep on giving. But yeah, so it's just a paint. It's really just a paint thing as much as a, it's a tech as, as much as a creative, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm I'm not worried about it. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the fact that the scene is going through kind of revival at the moment. Mm. People are interested. I don't know how long that's going to last, but you know, it's part of the evolution mm. again. And it will. We are constantly growing with what we're doing. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not worried about me. Mm. You know. Um, and I'm liking what other people are doing, and yeah, you just got to keep open, isn't you? Really? I'm yeah. loving every minute. I'm a happy camper. I've got Don's like yeah. yourself coming through the house, <laughs> and I have a good chat, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do find it weird that people are interested in what I was doing four years ago. Mm. I've got to say, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit strange. Mm. You know, uh, you know I'm I mean, not, it's, I'm, things are full cycle. I mean, beyond the streets, I think um, it uh, it celebrates that. Uh, well, yeah, did, there's a lot of know? things. There's a lot of things celebrating that, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of books coming out, and there's a lot of good work. I mean, after these books, yeah, I don't even know it, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I should I should keep my eyes a bit more peeled for it. And yeah, stuff. But, um, yeah. You know, um, yeah. But you know, where's it going next? Where's it going? And how does it, you know, how does it tie in with? I mean, I know that you know it's a whole culture. So there's cultures and then there's subcultures, and you know, graffiti and what you do, and you know, be. Break dancing and beatbox and hip hop, they you know, they're all blended and they're all part mm. of the same mm. subculture in a way. Yeah. You know, that's constantly changing, isn't it? Yeah, because a lot of it's because technology, it, n not by any fault of its own, it's just people use platforms as a resource. And if they get really into, say, deep dive into beatboxing, these 
the elements within beatboxing fraction off as well. Yeah. So the fault lines keep on moving, and then you've got the separation that slowly mm. all mm. And tools, tools, whatever tools move. you're using change what you yeah, do as well, don't totally. you? Totally. You know, so the, yeah, the tools that come along. So yeah. Like I was talking about the spray can, you know, yeah. the, paint, the paint that we have now and all the caps you can buy and all that changes what can be done. Totally. Like breakdancing is mm. going to the Olympics next year. Already Nike mm-hmm. have got a, a, a B-boy mm-hmm. sneaker. Mm-hmm. Now that in itself is like, so there's going to be like eight to ten year olds walking into Nike seeing these shoes, disassociating it with breaking, but then all of a sudden that becomes the entry hole. Fashion becomes the entry hole mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. b-boying. And that will lead on to something else. And these kids will come up and do something completely different. And I really hope they do. And I hope mm. they do something that pisses us off. Yeah, yeah. Because We shouldn't like because it. Because <laughs> older people should not... <laughs> no, no, I'll put that, rephrase that. The kids should be doing something to piss off the older people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, because that's what we did and that's what all teenagers, probably going back to whenever teenagers first came about, mm. are doing, you know. Um, I think w- I th- what it's all progress, isn't it? And I think you you doing what you do now, is, as you mentioned, you know, you're, you're working in the more technological forefront mm. um, with your nephew, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, things of that nature, it obviously allows for the spoils of going off and, you know, roller booting or, you know, Creating yeah, I mean, and... playing around with code is not as much fun as painting on the wall, you know, it's, it's not as colourful. But, although, yeah, at the mo- in the moment, it's not as much fun, yeah. you just, you know, yeah, yeah. but, yeah, you, you're experimenting with stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, forward th- it's, it's, it's as forward thinking from an adult point of view as it perhaps is for a kid of, mm-hmm. you know, 11 plus to find a pair of Nikes for break dancing or, you know, a tin of... I paint them up, you know. Yeah. I used to paint my trainers up, you know. I used to paint my trainers actually before graffiti was coming out. So I remember I used to have those, a bit like these, you know, with the, with the white front. Ah, the like the shell toes, yeah. And I used yeah. to just paint. I used to just paint on them. I mm. paint. I paint my toes coming through the front, you know, whatever. I just the paint stuff. Really... Just paint. Yeah. Paint everything. But that come again. That comes from your childhood of just your Painting. dad being quite liberal and letting you. Yeah, both my mum and dad were liberal about, about you know do what you want, just don't harm people, don't steal, you know, just um, but. Be happy, you know. Mm. Be creative. Paint, paint everything. You, you, know? You, know, you understand how rare that is, though. That the, the liberalness of your family has allowed for all of your family, <laughs> your parents, to allow for all your family to be. Probably, I've never thought about that it's before. Rare, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. You imagine <laughs> how many mom? people out <laughs> there. Big up, big up them. Yeah. Yeah, my mum passed away last year as well, but she got ninety nine point nine, and she was reading her poetry at ninety three on stage with people. Wow. So she, you know, she was out there like good energy pushing, the doing, arts. Whatever, doing what she wanted to do. But that is so yeah. important, man. When you've got like an elder flying their own flag because they feel they they can and they they do something with such honour and passion. So you do it, my sister does it as well. You got to keep, you know, doing stuff. Yeah. yeah, do it. You know, you just do it. I mean, like, you know, what? Back in the eighties, I remember, like, in the kids' seventies, probably, uh, people were painting cars. So people would always paint cars, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't see that anymore. No. And people are scared of painting their cars because they're too valuable, or they're worried about being pulled over by the police because they stand out. Yeah. All right, and I get those arguments, but. People used to paint their cars and it was great because it was yeah. weird. She was and, fun. And, and, and you'd, every so often you see a really funny one. Yeah. You know, you see something really beautiful and it's like, um, just paint everything, man. Yeah, Because it's like, um, my mum used to say to me, the f- her favourite image of that made her think of me was a Mordillo cartoon. I used to love Mordillo okay. cartoons. I don't know if you know it and stuff, but... Um, um, anyway, basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a picture of a street of houses, all grey, and one of them, the roof has been painted multicoloured and the police are just taking him off the ladder and putting him in the back of a van, <laughs> you know, and he's, he just wanted to paint his house. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a bit different. And he just, um, she always said that reminded, reminded of me because basically you just, I paint stuff. Freedom. Yeah, yeah, you know. Could you create the kind of people that jump on roller boots and, and with zero fucks of... Well, I'm sure there's safety involved, but it's just a free form of it. I'm scared before. There is a there is a danger to it. There is a there is a fear to it. But but, it's the free um, form. It's the it's the the thing I get with skating is it's like flying. It's like complete freedom. It's like 
you know, I could, I could do it. I'm still, you know, I'm 60 now. I'm still skating eight hours a day sometimes. I'm just loving the... I the, fucking um, love that. The, I'm still love loving the, the freedom of mm. the movement of mm. the... Yeah, it's just, it's about it's about being alive, isn't it? That stuff. Yeah, and if if you're ever in doubt going through anything in your mid thirties, you'll come out the other side and you'll be exactly like us. <laughs> <laughs> We're too far gone to go back. We're doing it, and you have to help. What end? We don't. Well, know. I think don't don't grow up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to a degree. I mean, you know, we all grow up. We all got responsibilities, but don't grow up. Completely. Don't let it affect you. Because I remember when I was a kid, I used to think growing up was so boring. And as I became a grown up, I realised I was right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know, we all we all are growing up, and, and they are. You know, but and you, you get you know skills and you get a knowledge and all that shit. I I know, but the thing is, it's retaining that little spark of like curiosity mm. and interest and playfulness. And if you don't do, it, I've been you know I've been through phases in my life when I've been the complete opposite. Well, I've been dead, you know, feeling mm. like really blocked places, dead yeah. and dead and, you know, and not not focused or not creative or whatever. And, you know, when you're in it, if you feel like, you mm. know, that's going to be it, mm. but actually it doesn't have to be. And it isn't. You just wait. Yeah. yeah. It'll change like the weather. Yeah. Seasonal. But, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, life sometimes gets in the way and all that, yeah. you know, things happen. But um, be playful. It's just my kind of thing to... The kids out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, the, and the grown ups. Yeah, yeah. It's not the kids, they were already playful. Yeah. yeah, it's the grown ups. It's the ones. I used to, I, I never got when, when I get with music, you know, I got a wired music taste and I never understood these people that seem to, and I might be wrong, but seem to, the music's taste tend to stop when they're about 20, you know, and they were yeah. listening to the same thing in their 40s or they were listening to their 20s. Yeah, now, yeah. I still do that a little bit, but there's new stuff coming out all the time. Yeah, hip hop got a bit boring for me in the nineties. I got to say, mm. and I went off it and stuff. But now, you know, the newer stuff of the hip hop, you know, which is either hip hop or hip hop inspired. Mm. There's some, you know, Laura yeah. Khan and stuff is really you know, beautiful and Lizzo and all that. Mm. You know, there's some people mm. doing some nice, beautiful music out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all not yeah. just. It's just not all the, you know, the misogynist rubbish that was coming out in the 90s, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Which people f tend to forget about. Like, they talk about, you know, certain artists of the day talking about their coochies and things like that, like, yeah, f on TikTok for kids to sing along. Yeah, but we had two live crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, NWA went too far behind. It, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Luke and all those guys that were literally just... There was some nasty stuff out nasty there. Nasty motherfuckers. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, that's what they felt they had to do. I, I don't yeah. know. But it... it I don't get the misogyny shit, no, and no, the racist no. shit, and all that. You no, know, no, it makes um, sense. You know, I grew up in London in a multiracial country, and uh, but that's why our well, well, multiracial city, sorry, not country. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why I feel like to to recreate, even in a graffiti sense, create a, a our own style, the one that reflects all the inner communities within our city, within our, our yeah, wider yeah. communities. Yeah, yeah. It's super important, man. Right. Hack Baker. You heard of Hack Baker? No. He's fucking great, Hack Baker. Okay. I'll, I'll put you on him. Yeah, yeah do that. Yeah, yeah. another kind of character that has... He's Doing kind of, what? Well, Doing... he's kind of got like... He's, he's got this, um, I guess, Mike Skinner Streets kind of vibe to it. Okay. Bit, bit specials madness. Mm -hmm. But he's he's definitely on the more indie rap side of things. He's a bit, bit cockney. I guess it... I guess like a more... <laughs> Modern Chaz and Dave to a many great extent. It's just it's <laughs> sounds a bit of like smiley culture going on there. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's got that, that punk London, thing. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All the dogs, kind of. Yeah, yeah, okay. Swang. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, you're, you're, you're it's just so different. Yeah, well, that's good. Compared to a Laura Connor, like you mentioned, you know, they just but that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tapestry of all sorts. It is. It is. It is. You know, and we live in. Yeah, I don't know what it's like outside uh, uh, London. We live in this multicultural, multi-energy kind of mm. city, which, I, which, which, I, which at the moment is great. You know, when I was a kid, it was, you know, racism was really shit in mm. this in this city. You know, my best mate was black, girlfriend was black at one point, and uh, you know, it was it was, it wasn't always a nice place to live. Mm. Yeah, and it still exists. I ain't saying it's gone. Mm. It's more subtle, but generally, I think people live. And it's more accepting now than they were. Mm. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. You know. And the arts are celebrated in all exhibition houses and on all Sort podcasts. of, yeah. They're not funded, though. No. We need let's, more funding. Let's get rid of the Tories and then 
maybe no Labour are too bad. But anyway, uh, we need you know they we need you got to support the kids doing art. You got to support yeah. uh, that really. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, there's a big push in our politics to support like the sciences and maths and you know English and that. and that's all important. But they you need to support the art. Everything. Everything around you, everything in this space has been designed by somebody. Mm -hmm. It's been created mm -hmm. by somebody, yeah? Mm -hmm. Everything. That all comes out of the arts. That all comes out of thinking mm. and being playful. You know, I think the best, the greatest invention mankind has come up with is the pencil because mm. basically nothing ever gets done without somebody sitting down and mm. sketching it out first. Mm -hmm. Mapping it out. Yeah. And, um, you know, your speaker over there, your laptop, everything mm. is all been designed by someone. You know, so you got to, you got to support the arts. Support all, the arts of all kinds of in all kinds of ways. Hell yeah! You know, it's a food so. for thought. Get uh, out. That's it. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Thank cool. you so much for joining us, my brother. It's been You're a pleasure. Welcome, yeah, nice. Setting yeah. the walls to rights, one podcast at a time over here. Mm -hmm. uh, snake in the building. Won't be the last time, that's for sure. Killer Keller podcast oh, no. out, like out was it was out of fashion. Sharing is caring. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right, stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Thanks, Snake. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, it's good.